Greetings, my lovable weirdos. I hope you're all safe and well and having the most wonderful day. Halloween's just around the corner, and considering the state of the world today, I thought I'd try to make a half skull mask that can be velcroed onto a washable cotton mask. This mask was originally inspired by Glam and Gore. I wanted to see if I could make something similar, but without the liquid latex. So if you want to know how I made this half skull mask out of plaster bandages, keep watching! Before we dive into this week's Tinker Tuesday, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring the notification bell and set notifications to all so that you know when I post new videos. And if you like bedtime stories that are dark and macabre, check out my podcast, Chantress Reads, where I read aloud stories of gothic fiction, science fiction, and fantasy. I also have a Patreon page. It's currently set up for the podcast, but I'm trying to figure out how I'd incorporate this channel into that, since I don't think it's necessary to have two separate pages. If you have any ideas of what you'd like to see on my Patreon, feel free to comment down below. Now with all of that out of the way, let's make a skull mask! Here's what you'll need. This took me a day and a half to make, though most of that time was waiting for the plaster to dry. First, I used aluminum foil and masking tape to bulk up the areas under my nose and my chin. This is so that there would be space under the mask to breathe. Next, I use cling wrap and tape to create my working surface. The intention is for this to imitate how a cotton mask would lay on my face. I then sketched on my half skull design. I didn't do this, but you might want to put your reusable mask on the face form to trace out the boundaries you need to work within. Next, I cut up strips of plaster bandages of different sizes. I used the thinner strips for the edges and the thicker strips for the bulk of the body of the mask. Just dip the plaster strips in water and smooth that onto the design. I only used about two to three layers, but that's a bit thin and makes the mask fragile. I'd recommend using about four to six layers. I had initially planned to make the teeth out of something else, but changed my mind and then conveniently forgot to film how I plastered the teeth. But here's how I did it. Taking strips that were about the width of the tooth, I folded it over itself and smushed the sides to make the plaster look tooth-like. I did the same thing for the fangs. After the half skull had dried overnight, I decided to add more plaster to define the nose area. I then left this to dry for about another 4-5 to five hours. Once the mask was dry, I used a scalpel to separate the top teeth from the bottom and to neaten the edge of the jawbone. Be patient with this step. If you only use a couple layers of plaster, applying too much force with a scalpel or box cutter might crack the mask. Similarly, try not to hold down the mask itself when cutting, but hold down the cling wrap or the tape so that you don't accidentally crush the plaster. Next, I sanded down the mask. Focus on the edges, but you can also sand the surface of the mask if you want a smoother surface. I then sealed and primed both sides of the mask with one layer of Mod Podge. I found that if you don't seal the mask, the plaster will leave a coating of dust on your reusable mask. Once the Mod Podge dried, I used an old black eyeshadow to define the edges and the teeth of the mask. To attach the half skull to my reusable mask, 
I stuck on Velcro dots. I had Velcro that had sticky backs, but if you don't have that, you can just super glue or hot glue your Velcro onto the inside of the half skull. I sewed on the Velcro on the reusable mask so that it would hold up to being washed. I used a black mask because I knew I was going to cover most of my face and my neck in black face paint, and I wanted the mask to blend into that to maintain the illusion. This is a cotton mask I made. I'll link the tutorial I used in the description box below. I'll also link a very informative video that explains what combination of fabrics are most effective for reusable masks. And that's it! A removable half skull that can be worn with a reusable mask. I painted the half of my face not covered by the mask in a simplified version of my St. Valentine's makeup. I'll also link that in the description box below. Thank you for watching, and until next time, have a wonderful and safe Halloween, and keep on embracing your inner weirdo.